Good morning and welcome to We Play Games. I'm Walker and here we are in the Vicky 3 Academy discussing the legitimacy rework that came in patch 1.1. Um, so for those of you who are entirely unfamiliar with legitimacy, you should be aware that the governance principle laws and the distribution of power laws are still incredibly important when it comes to the legitimacy of your government. So you see here that we have the head of state's interest group, Austrian aristocracy and government plus 50 which is plus 20 from monarchy and plus 30 from autocracy. What that means is if you want to have a legitimate government in uh, patch 1.1 and in, for that matter in patch 1.0.6, you probably want to make sure that you have either your government's head of state represented here in your interest groups, or if it's something stupid like uh, landowners that you switch out of either switch out of monarchy or switch out of autocracy or Maybe both, um, but that's not the only source of legitimacy. So in patch 1.0.6, it was calculated using head of state, total clout in government, and the gov and the, the size of your government. So in patch 1.0.6, the more interest groups you had in, or for that matter, the more parties you had in your government, the more um, penalties you would have to your legitimacy. So you couldn't just like put everyone in government and be fine with it. But that's kind of, it's different now. So instead of it being calculated based off of in uh, the head of state, the clout, and the number of interest groups. It is now based off of head of state, clout, the government ideology penalty. And then of course in a democratic regime, you also get a large chunk of your legitimacy purely from votes. So the votes that you acquire, if you have something like census suffrage or universal suffrage, you see how it says plus 100 legitimacy from votes over here. So the, the government votes is the amount of the votes that you received in the last election, times whatever multipliers you have, right? You get plus 20 from a presidential republic, plus 70 from, a cen from census suffrage. So what that should tell you is that even in a democratic regime, the nature of your government is going to have a huge impact on the way that your legitimacy is calculated. But that's not the end of the road, because there's also this government ideology penalty. So instead of giving you a penalty for having just a whole bunch of parties in your government, or a whole bunch of interest groups in your government, now the way that patch 1.1 works with um, your legitimacy, if you have a bunch of interest groups in government who want the same thing, then you'll see that government ideology penalty will, will shrink away. So right now in Austria, we have the landowners, the armed forces, and the intelligentsia all in government together. Unfortunately, because of the personal ideologies of the, the leaders involved uh, with these interest groups, we can I can tell you right away that we're getting a really big chunk of this government ideology penalty from just having the intelligentsia in government right now. And because this is an autocracy, that government ideology penalty is going to be pretty big. It's going to, it's really going to hold down legitimacy for us. And so what we should do if we're trying to maximize our legitimacy, which we'll talk about whether or not you want to maximize your legitimacy. But if you want to maximize your legitimacy, then you would do something like remove the intelligentsia. If you removed the intelligentsia, then the government ideology penalty would go down to minus 43. But if we brought in the devout, you see it's only at minus 46. And that's because the devout are very, very closely aligned to the armed forces and the Austrian aristocracy here because of the traditionalist view of the Austrian aristocracy. So they now care about state religion, which means that they are going to have overlap with the devout here. And the royalist sympathies of the armed forces endorsing monarchy mean that they are also going to get along with the moralists here in devout and the paternalistic ideology here in um, the landowners. And so what that means is that the way that you need to assemble a government is pretty different now. Having a whole bunch of interest groups in government isn't even necessarily a bad thing, right? We brought in the rural folk and now we're, oh no, we're down to minus 64, but we have this big bonus now. We're gonna get plus 25% loyalists from standard of living increases. If we didn't have the rural folk and we were just here in righteous government, we would get a 50% enactment time bonus. That's kind of like the, that's the cream of the crop here. I think the biggest difference between patch 1.0.6 and patch 1.1 and patch 1.1.1 isn't just the way that legitimacy is calculated, it's also the impact of legitimacy. So it used to be that you could have a fairly low legitimacy, you know, 25, 30, 35, and you could still get a lot of law work done because you would be able to assemble a, a minority party and have them work on things. and 
eventually they would get stuff passed, especially if you were willing to boost their legitimacy by running lower taxation or boost their enactment time by not using all of your authority. But now that's a lot harder. You you literally cannot enact laws if you have less than 25 legitimacy and you have a, a giant bonus to your enactment time if you have more than 90 legitimacy. And so keep in mind that that I, th I think that is the, the really big change here. I still don't think that radicals from standard of living matters. I still don't really think that loyalists matter. Um, but the fact that laws are tied up here in legitimacy in a different way is a big deal. Legitimacy would, in patch 1.0.6, determine the speed with which you are rolling on things, whereas largely in patch 1.1 it's not. Um, the important thing is going to be whether or not your interest groups are mad enough to form um, oppositions to the laws that you're trying to pass, because keep in mind that if there is a movement here that opposes one of the changes that you're doing, they will add stall chance to it. That is still in game and it's very important, and so having a lower legitimacy can still be annoying because opposition interest group approval means that they're going to just naturally be angrier um, whether or not they actually hate what's going on right minus one from contested government despite the fact that catholic the, the devout are largely happy with us but that's also going to mean that if you have a lower legitimacy government you're more likely to have angry IGs outside of the government, which means that you're more likely to have opposition movements form um, in support of whatever laws you're trying to change. So le the legitimacy rework is a really big deal. I think I think the biggest things for you to keep in mind, the government ideology penalty means that you either kind of want absolutely nobody in government or everybody in government, because it's pretty easy to have just an enormous amount of legitimacy by just bringing everybody in. Look at that, we're at, we're at 79 legitimacy while including every non-marginalized uh, group here, just because of the, the way that this is calculated, which is I, I think I think the, the too long didn't read version of this video is that the legitimacy rework almost certainly is going to get reworked. I think I heard that that's floating out there. If somebody knows that that's in a dev diary, go ahead and, and post it. I, I think that the legitimacy rework is an interesting idea. I think that it's not quite balanced yet just because it is it is pretty ridiculous that you can create insanely high legitimacy governments like this by just including everybody but i guess if you're just including everybody and they're all and they all agree then you know life can't be all that bad here in in austria but unfortunately as a downside to that what it means is that strategies like using Buddhist monks and intelligentsia together, it's very difficult now in, in patch 1.1. And so I, you, if this doesn't get rebalanced, then expect that the easiest way to deal with, um, with landowners is either going to be corn laws or just line infantry. They also need to deal with the fact that if you have zero legitimacy, you get an enormous number of negative radicals. So you can dramatically increase the size of your loyalists by having zero government, but that's that's pretty obviously a bug. All right, that's Walker. Take care.